Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This lecture is about the past physiology based approach for hemodynamically unstable unit for management of a baby in a shock. I will speak about the introduction about the blood pressure from the historical point of view. The physiology consideration in the preterm infant. <coughs> the past physiology of shock in general. Volume expander as uh, the primary way of management. The uh, drug therapy as the vasoactive uh, pharmaceutical therapy. Common, common critical uh, situation management based on the past research. So hemodynamic in a stable baby is a common scenario we are seeing in uh, different in ICUs uh, with different underlying past physiology according to the cause. Especially during the transitional period, there is high risk to have dysregulation in the systemic and the cerebral blood flow, which will affect the uh, neurodevelopmental uh, outcome of uh, the baby, affect the survivor, and the general outcome. And a lot of intracranial complications can occur. So, from the start, <coughs> By defining the pathology, we can uh, define the treatment, and we have put in our consideration that both the pathology and the treatment itself can lead to the poor neurodevelopmental outcome, either direct through the pathology or through creation of the hypotension, or as a part of uh, the side effect of the medication. So, considering the arterial pressure and the hemodynamic care, the cardiovascular support has been based in uh, uh, largely on the blood pressure. So, the mean aerial pressure remains the most available bedside measurement in the management of a hemodynamic unstable baby. But what is the normal blood pressure at different age? Uh, this uh, graph show roughly <coughs> a measurement of the mean blood pressure according to the gestational age from 23 weeks till uh, term baby which we are considering like is a gestational age plus two or three will be uh, considered as normal uh, but this is as we said it is uh, roughly speaking we cannot depend on this mean arterial blood pressure we have put in our consideration the systemic, the systolic and the diastolic uh, blood pressure. And we have to know that the cardiovascular uh, uh, compromise compensation which occur can maintain normal blood pressure. Still there is cardiovascular uh, uh, compromisation but the blood pressure may be normal. So the baby may be normal uh, tensive when he has decrease in the cardiac output because he has adequate compensatory increase in the systemic vascular resistance so he will be normal tensive the same like if we have decreased vasomotor tone but still there is compensatory increase in the cardiac output by the function of the myocardium and the, the uh, diastolic feeling so the baby will maintain a normal tensive because the blood pressure is related to the cardiac output and the systemic vascular resistance as you see <coughs> why the baby would be hypotensive if decompensation or compensatory failure occurred so the baby would be hypotensive in adequate compensatory increase in the systemic resistance vascular resistance or inadequate compensatory increase in the cardiac output may lead to the hypotensive. So the baby will have compromisation in the cardiovascular mechanism, in the hemodynamic, 
but still he has normal tensile here and here or maybe he has hypotension so don't wait for hypotension to develop completely because hypotension will appear later on when the baby has failed his uh, compensation so hypotension by itself is not a disease it is a marker of the compromised blood flow so blood flow might be compromised with low or normal or high blood pressure hypotension might happen with any of the past physiological mechanism which may compromise blood flow so not all hypotensive infant need treatment if still we have systemic blood flow is adequate and don't wait for the blood pressure to fail to the level of hypotension and the approach based on simply on the map alone represent a simple and accurate under stage <coughs> so this picture showing the hemodynamic balance monitoring and the its monitoring so the blood pressure related to the systemic blood flow the cardiac output and the systemic vascular uh, resistance so the systemic resistance affected by the autonomic endocrine vascular flow regulation the pH the parameter of the blood gas bc 2 b 2 and the calcium level the systemic flow also affected by the autonomic system endocrine system the vascular tone and the the pathology itself the cytokine and the chemo uh, uh, chemes uh, like in case of sepsis <coughs> so this will affect the flow also our any drops will as a treatment will affect the flow the treatment which cause vas pressure like dopamine and the lysotropic action like milirinone also will affect the resistance and we have to be continuous monitoring by the Doppler and the visible light technology if we have performing the echo to maintain the hemodynamic balance and the uh, monitoring so how to improve the quality of care and the outcome by number one understanding of the hemodynamic and the passive physiology of the normal unit the physiology of normal unit and then the disease of physiology must be understand and you have to consider the limitation of using of the map alone and the property of the vasoactive medication which you will use don't depend on the map you have to use the systolic arterial blood pressure <coughs> and the distal because the systolic blood pressure will reflect for you the contractility of the left ventricle the left ventricle after load as an after load again is the contractility and how much was the stroke volume of the left ventricle pre preload while the diastolic will reflect for you the resting pressure against the vessel the volume status and systemic vascular resistance use of the echo if possible in your unit will help and identify shock as early as you can in early phase so your action will be at a time so identifying the shock in early phase is very important and if you want to treat don't wait for the insult to to go on till the irreversible shock so the path of physiology will start by the insult why the mean blood pressure is still maintained due to compensation of the shock and the when hypotension occur you mean that you are going to the uncompensated shock which will lead to multi failure multi organ failure and then irreversible shock so early identification before progressing to the irreversible shock to prevent the brain and the other organ injury is very important so if you want to interact you have to interact early here as the insult treatment of the insult like sepsis for example like uh, volume <coughs> baby has hypovolemic shock if you cannot treat as early as as the insult so you have to treat during the compensation don't wait for the uh, uncompensation so the passive physiology based approach to choosing in any drops for sick baby must be basophysiological based, not physician biased. 
so you have to use the past physiology understand it and deal according and at the end of the lecture we will give uh, some example of the common scenarios which occur in the NICU related to the past physiology of the disease so the past physiology of shock if you want to summarize either affecting <laughs> the heart rate and the stroke volume through affection of the preload like the hypovolemia the solid dysfunction and the volume overload the contractility like poor contractility hyper or hypodynamic of the myocardium or the afterload by high afterload and below afterload which can affect the afterload why the neuroendocrine and the the paracrine regular mechanism affect the vasodilatation and the vasoconstriction of the blood vessel so this is the passive surgery of shock don't forget that arrhythmia can affect the heart rate and the, all of this will affect the cardiac output and the steaming vascular pressure which will affect the blood pressure which is still our main way of monitoring of a baby in a shock so <coughs> there's some consideration different imperative like the type of the myocardial function and the, the cells of the myocardium the adrenergic system of the baby the cerebral perfusion way of uh, uh, pulmonary effect and regulation of the cerebral perfusion so in the myocardium <coughs> in other heart 60% of the myocardium are con contractile contractile tissue while early preterm only 30% are contractile and it is relatively disorganized and the mechanism of control of its activity still under some so this is a myocardium if you go to the adrenergic system in a preterm you find that the sympathetic innervation to a preterm in the myocardium is limited the adrenal receptor in the myocardium and in the peripheral vasculature is different in the myocardium has a pattern of denervation hypersensitivity where this small concentration of catecholamine will give you maximum stimulation give you very high response while in the peripheral vasculature you will find that in a preterm baby there is a few beta 1 receptor and the many active alpha 1 receptors so catecholamine stimulation will activate more the alpha 1 receptor which will lead to response towards the peripheral vasoconstriction it will be like vasoconstriction effect mainly affecting the afterload and the augmenting it at the expense of the cardiac output so there is will there will be affection of the contractility and this is not desired for the preterm baby <coughs> if you go to the cerebral perfusion O2 regulation you will find it is the same like the other but the, it is immature in the mechanism and the response and the in preterm different from the term in the auto regulation area if you see here this is the mean blood pressure this is the cerebral blood flow so by increasing the mean blood pressure there is increase in the cerebral blood flow till a limit or by decrease in the mean blood pressure there is decrease in the cerebral blood flow till a limit but there is sharp decline here and the sharp increase here with the area of autoregulation is so limited in a preterm baby while it is so smooth in a term or adult so dopamine can destroy also this autoregulation if you are early using by increasing rapidly the blood uh, mean blood pressure as you see with increasing the uh, cerebral uh, blood flow to a higher extent so again <coughs> as we see that hypotension is not a disease if you go to the definition of hypotension theoretically there is three type of uh, definition the O2 regulatory blood pressure threshold here this is the area of the auto regulatory under which the regulation of the cerebral blood flow will be affected more so the blood pressure mean blood pressure associated with the loss of the cerebral blood flow 
autoregulation and the, it is about 28 to 30 in very low uh, birth weight and this is roughly but the function blood pressure threshold which when the blood mean blood pressure decreases gradually then reach to a certain point at which the function blood pressure threshold where the blood pressure decreases and reach to a value at which the cerebral function become compromised and the, it's said to be around 22 to 24 also this is roughly but if you come down more by the blood pressure and maybe become more hypotensive you reach to the ischemic blood pressure threshold where the blood pressure decreases to a value at which the integrity become compromised so you will start to treat here or here or here <coughs> and you have to consider that this is R3 point or 3 definition this 3 point are roughly not uh, well estimated in different baby according to the age and the weight this is roughly you have to look to the flow you have to look to the function at all you have to look to the perfusion don't take the mean blood pressure as the only uh, parameter okay so this is the definition of the hypotension the autoregulatory blood pressure and the function blood pressure and at the end the ischemic blood pressure <coughs> management volume expansion is one of the management which we are uh, using uh, in most of uh, the babies and the most of patients uh, but it has its own limitation and the, it is a very spline survey in systemic hypotension irrespective of the etiology uh, it may be normal saline albumin or packed red blood cells as in case of uh, significant anemia or hemorrhage and you have to consider that the normal saline is better than the albumin because the albumin will affect the pulmonary function and the albumin has higher risk of fluid uh, retention and as we said it will impair the gas exchange so use the volume especially if there is hypovolemia related to the shock and use the pectoral blood cells specifically if you have significant anemia or hemorrhage try to avoid album so related evidence especially in preterm without a history of evidence of hypovolemia the role of fluid is less clear in preterm baby number one number two rapid administration will increase the morbidity and the mortality again on the cerebral oxygen delivery volume expansion has no effect if compared with uh, uh, tropic agent so don't use more than three uh, time of IV fluid and you don't waste the time waiting for the enotropes because the enotropic action will be better so this is the recommendation volume expansion is considered in clinical situation with hypovolemia for specific pathophysiology trial of 10 to 20 ml of crystalloid is recommended and if not uh, successful early initiation of pharmacological support is recommended and this pharmacological therapy either will be the catecholamine agonist <coughs> the phosphodiesterase inhibitor the most important one is the medrinone in our unit and the vasopressin and its analog so for selection of specific drug we have to follow the past physiology factor related to the case and the H drug must be used uh, with caution because of the different mode of action on the myocardium and the prepar uh, uh, adreno uh, receptor and its possible side effect so according to the mode of action of this drug either one which is <coughs> has predominant vasopressor activity like the dopamine vasopressin and the norepinephrine which is used mainly in children and adults not in neonates and with predominantly inotropic activity like dopamine and the melrinone and the, the third one potent non-selective alpha agonist and 
activate also the beta 1 beta 2 receptor which is the uh, main step which is the epinephrine and the another one with the complex effect which is the hydrocortisol these are the mode of action of the four epinephrine is the most important uh, part of them and the vitamine is the most specific in neonatal age as it is uh, uh, predominant in drops but if you want vasopressor activity so go for uh, uh, dopamine don't uh, uh, forget medrinone by its inotropic effect plus its lysotropic effect and the effect on the pulmonary hypertension so according to the receptor <coughs> which are alpha 1 adrenergic beta adrenergic or dopamine the alpha 1 adrenergic location either in the vascular wall and it will cause vasoconstriction in the wall of the heart it will increase the duration of contraction without increase the, the rate so this is the alpha 1 if you go to the beta adrenergic 1 or 2 1 is in the heart 2 in the blood vessel and the, in beta 2 it causes vasodilatation while in the heart it is uh, it is inotropic action and chronotropic action so this is the beta adrenergic in the heart if you go to the dopamine receptor which is present in another area like the renal or mesenteric coronary or cerebral <coughs> blood vessels <coughs> it will cause vasodilatation can be are the three main receptors which we are by our drugs <coughs> so the blood vessel as we said contain alpha 1 and the alpha 2 and cause either constriction through the alpha 1 and the alpha 2 dilatation uh, sorry beta 2 dilatation in the heart the beta 1 and the alpha 1 and the both of them will increase the contractility but see some tachycardia can occur early why the pulmonary blood vessel is specific for the pulmonary blood vessel the beta 2 will cause vasodilatation so it is uh, of use in case of pulmonary hypertension while alpha 1 goes vasoconstriction so if you are giving a drug which you want to to, to, to make decrease in the pulmonary blood pressure at the same time has some contractility increase in the heart don't use here Dopamine, because dopamine will affect the alpha 1 and good vasoconstriction, while the vitamin will cause vasodilatation and the medirinol also. So, with a special consideration to the dopamine, dopamine is a dose related from uh, 5 to 10 to more than 10. So, if it was between 2 and 5 dopamine, microgram per kilogram per minute, it will affect the dopamine uh, uh, receptor which we said that it causes vasodilatation of the renal, mesenteric, cerebral, coronary, uh, but sometimes it causes uh, through the subtype uh, uh, vasoconstriction. While if you increase the dose between 5 to 10, it will have uh, uh, action on the alpha uh, adrenergic receptor, and the beta 1 has no beta 2. So in, uh, in alpha 1, it causes mild increase in the systemic vascular resistance, so as a vasopressor, but here on the beta 1, it will increase uh, the cardiac output by the contractility with variable effect on the heart rate so if you increase more <coughs> so the stimulation will affect only the alpha adrenergic receptor by increase the systemic vascular resistance to become completely vasopressor which you don't like in a unit so as a rule dopamine is a vasopressor uh, uh, medication it is a vasopressor medication with any effect of increasing cardiac output and the variable increase in the heart rate with increasing in the mean blood pressure.
while dopamine has minimal effect in the systemic vascular resistance but increase the inotropic and pronotropic which is uh, limited to one hour about 60 minutes of increasing the heart rate only and it reduce the left ventricular filling uh, pressure so allow more filling during the stall and has minimal vasodilatation so it is not a vasopressor the blood pressure will change between vasodilatation here and vasoconstriction here so it will be uh, to some extent near to the vasodilator why it is mainly an inotropic so it is mainly inotropic plus chronotropic and the vasodilator effect the map as we said there is a balance between vasodilatation and vasoconstriction so the vitamin increase cardiac output via positive inotropic effect by increase the stroke volume <coughs> depending on the dose and the chronotropic effect will increase the heart rate which will be uh, during the first hour of uh, medication after initiation of the uh, medication impact on systemic blood pressure and after load in preference of circulation you find that the beta 2 mediated vasodilatation and the alpha 1 vasoconstrictor will cause minimal impact with minimal vasodilated effect while dopamine which has 25% will be changed into norepinephrine which may contribute to its cardiovascular effect in low dose has a renal effect as we said so the dopamine receptor in moderate will increase the myocardial contractility with little effect on the heart rate in higher dose a predominant vasoconstrictor through the adrenergic receptors limitation of dopamine related uh, to neonate so there is a limitation for the dopamine related to neonate this limitation will be number one its metabolism and the clearance are less <coughs> in preterm and the neonate number two <coughs> cardiovascular system has variable and unpredicted effect and balance of its anotropic versus vasoconstrictive effect number three the uh, renal effect of dopamine in low dose we suspect that it will cause renal vasodilatation dopamine receptor in the renal vascular and the renal vascular bed it will cause vasodilatation increase the renal blood flow so the diuresis while in real in some babies it will affect the subtypes and the it will not cause dopamine receptor vasodilatation but it will lead to dopamine prefer alpha receptor stimulation so vasoconstriction increase the vascular resistance decrease the renal output and oliguria comparing dopamine and dopamine dopamine is more effective at the improving of the systemic blood flow in a randomized <coughs> blind trial <coughs> systemic flow increase in a preterm unit receiving dopamine as compared to dopamine dopamine is superior at increasing the blood pressure by the vasopressor effect with little increase in the left ventricular output or systemic blood flow so question must be taken <coughs> if we are giving dopamine in a preterm baby when dopamine is used particularly in higher dose norepinephrine this is a potent non-selective alpha agonist with some effect at the beta 1 receptor so it will increase the systolic vascular resistance systemic vascular resistance and the systolic arterial propulsion and little or no change in the heart rate or the cardiac output this is an organism and it is considered as a very slight therapy in adult and the pediatric vaso dilator shock may be effective in some term unit with the shock refractory to dopamine and dopamine especially in cases of severe gram negative sepsis epinephrine <coughs> this is a potent non-selective alpha agonist so it will affect both beta 1 and the beta 2 receptor it increases the stroke volume 
through the contractility of the, of the heart, increase the systemic vascular resistance also. So, increase the cardiac output and systemic blood pressure will okay greater degree than the body. And the, here, as you see, it works also in the PDA2 receptor, dopamine, uh, epinephrine. So, it's important in case if you have severe hypotension and at the same time pulmonary vascular restriction, pulmonary hypertension. So, limitation of uh, <coughs> adrenaline. <coughs> It, it will affect the metabolic uh, derangement der not seen with dopamine by increasing the plasma lactate. So it increases the plasma lactate till the contractility of the heart become okay, the cardiac will become okay, and then the lactate will start to decrease. Increase the serum glucose due to increase in the gluconeogenesis and extirpation of the metabolic acidosis will occur from the increase of the lactate at the start. It may lead to myocardial ischemia and this is very important in chronic use as it increases the myocardial oxygen demand that occur with its inotropic and the chronotropic effect. And it, it can cause coronary vasoconstrictive effects and cause myocardial ischemia in the other side. The vasopressin, which is a neuropeptide secreted from the posterior pituitary gland, its action is through the regulation of the plasma osmolarity. So it will affect the circulating blood volume, uh, defending against the hypovolemia and against hemorrhage. The cause regulation of the vascular tone has a vasoconstrictive effect. Uh, it has vasodilator effect in pulmonary uh, 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 vessels, so decrease the pulmonary vascular resistance, coronary and cerebral circulation. It has some radiation to the release of the nitric oxide. So vasopressin is uh, one of the important vasopressor drugs which will be used in hypotension, especially if it's associated with pulmonary hypertension and cyanosis. Going to the <coughs> main renal, which is a selective uh, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor, it is very important in causing relaxation and positive inotropic effect. The relaxation and the positive uh, uh, inotropic effect will cause the nocitropic effect, which increase the time for the diastolic filling of the uh, cardiac shunt. So it, is, it has a very important role as a vasodilator and at the same time to improve the myocardial function and to decrease the pulmonary hypertension. <coughs> Some important practice uh, uh, of melanone is very important to be used uh, early in case of uh, PDA before ligation as a prophylaxis for the post-PDA ligation syndrome which decrease the risk of the post-operative instability after ligation. Uh, pulmonary hypotension, as we said, in extreme loop persuade improved oxygenation and uh, increase the function of the right uh, uh, side. Uh, it has limitation, which you have to take care that uh, use uh, in hypotensive baby, it will increase the hypotension. Its half-life in term is around four hours while uh, prolonged <coughs> In preterm, and the, the prolongation may be related to the organ dysfunction, prematurity, and the HIV. This is uh, uh, just a summary of what I said of the effect of uh, the different drugs like dopamine, which increases the uh, mainly is the vasoconstrictor, the uh, norepinephrine, which is mainly systemic vascular resistance uh, increase, the vasopressin which is the same, uh, but decrease the pulmonary vascular resistance, uh, the dubutamine increase the stroke volume, and has no effect other, the melanone increase the stroke volume by anthropic effect, the systemic vascular resistance will decrease, and also the pulmonary vascular resistance will decrease, epinephrine will increase all of the three, so the systolic vascular resistance increase, 
and the ammonia phosphorus system also will increase but less than the systolic so there will be left to right shunt and it can be used in cases of pulmonary hypertension uh, with uh, hypotension, uh, systemic hypertension, especially in case of uh, sepsis. So this is just a summary of what we said about the drug. So the predominant uh, vasopressor, dopamine, vasopressor, and norepinephrine. This is the predominant vasopressor. Why the predominant in trope will be dopamine, epinephrine, and melarino. So take this in your consideration. <coughs> Corticosteroid, <coughs> its action <coughs> is a complex mechanism, and the frequency we are using in the refractory hypertension, hypotension in a preterm or sick, especially in the case of sepsis, it regulates and differentiates the response pathway for the alpha agonists and uh, uh, angiotensin 2, inhibit local production of the vasodilator like nitric oxide and the prostacycline have endocrine effects as we say by increase the circulating uh, catecholamine in preterm uh, in case of adrenal insufficiency or adrenal uh, hemorrhage improve uh, capillary uh, leak in case of sepsis and increase circulatory volume is <coughs> uh, specific to the very <coughs> first few hours, which is the transitional period. In the first 24 hours, there is low systemic blood flow, is common in very preterm and more mature babies with severe RDS. This low systemic uh, uh, blood flow is not always reflecting by the low blood pressure. The cause of the systemic blood flow are complex. May be related to the maladaptation to the high extra uterine systemic, uh, systemic, uh, and sometimes pulmonary vascular system increase. Uh, after day one, hypotension, hypotensive baby are more likely to have normal or high systemic blood flow, reflected uh, the vasodilatation. So empirically, in a trope that reduce the afterload such as dopamine may be more appreciated in this uh, time. Don't use dopamine, which will increase the uh, systemic uh, vascular resistance more than uh, this. Uh, this was more vasoconstrictive action, like dopamine may be more appreciated later on in you. So in the very 24 hour after you felt the placenta, you remove the very low, uh, uh, diastolic uh, uh, or uh, low systemic uh, resistance by removing this uh, placenta and start the compensatory vasopressor effect on the uh, blood vessel of the baby so the baby will have a, a, a high uh, afterload so don't use dopamine at this time and even in some babies who appear to be with low cardiac output Will, will will maintain its blood pressure for some time from this compensation. When the compensation fail, this is another uh, point at which we can start to use besides the dopamine, uh, some dopamine with low dose. <coughs> so this is a transition uh, from the intertrine to extratrine and the how the uh, systemic uh, vascular resistance will be affected by removal of the low blood pressure uh, uh, placenta, placental uh, area uh, and the increasing the systemic vascular uh, pressure could increase the blood pressure but cardiac output can be compromised so increasing the systemic vascular resistance by using dopamine for example Will increase the blood pressure, but the cardiac output will be compromised by acting against a very high uh, afterload. So, how to choose the enitrop in a preterm baby? <coughs> if you have your blood pressure okay, accepted or not accepted, 
So if it is accepted, either no treatment at all, or if you want to treat early, you have to use dobutamine or adrenaline, but low dose. But if you have the blood pressure low, and you want to increase the blood pressure, so you have something to increase the cardiac output by increase the contractility, so you have to treat by dobutamine and then vasopressor. Or don't treat and just continue to monitor them. So this is the area where there is no treatment, where is the blood pressure is considered to be uh, acceptable, and this is the area where the flow is less and you want to treat. So don't look to the blood pressure itself, look to the flow. Here is the flow still okay, so just continue monitoring, no treatment. Here is the flow become low, in spite of having normal blood pressure, so you can give the vitamin for the cardiac contractility, or little adrenaline, or the flow is low, <coughs> while you have <coughs> blood pressure is low, so also you will give the vitamin and then both the so in both situations, if you want to treat in a preterm early, you can use dobutamine at the start to support the inotropic effect, then give the vasopressor. Or if the flow is normal, perfusion is okay, so wait and continue monitoring of your baby. What about pulmonary hypertension? Pulmonary hypertension can occur if you have exposure to significant hypoxia, which causes vasoconstriction and this vasoconstriction will affect the pulmonary and the systemic vascular resistance at the same time <coughs> so increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance ratio <coughs> to the systemic vascular, uh, vascular resistance ratio will cause <coughs> pulmonary hypertension <coughs> <Sorry. coughs> so what is the pre preferred drug the preferred drug is a drug which increases the systemic vascular resistance more than the, the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary uh, vascular resistance. So the systemic vascular pressure will increase more than the pulmonary, so it will be improving the pulmonary hypertension. Or the drug which can cause pulmonary vasodilatation more than the systemic uh, uh, dilatation. So, preferred drug is that one with relatively greater vasoconstrictor effect as the systemic vascular resistance will help in treatment of pulmonary hypertension. So, when pulmonary hypertension is associated with myocardial dysfunction, so we want to treat the myocardial dysfunction, those with positive inotropic effect is preferred like dobutamine and then mineral. So, dobutamine is a good first uh, uh, choice by increasing in the pulmonary and the systemic blood flow in equal proportion and the little change in this ratio while mineralone potent pulmonary vasodilatation it will decrease the systemic blood uh, pressure so be careful and it has positive inotropic effect and at the same time the leucotropic effect will maintain the cardiac output So what about dopa dopamine and the epinephrine? If you have pulmonary vascular resistance comp compared in, in the, on the pulmonary vascular uh, resistance, both drugs have combined alpha and beta effect. So both will increase the systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary vascular resistance at the same time. But dopamine predominantly stimulates the beta one subtype, so produce produce more increase in the resistance of the pulmonary vascular resistance. Why the epinephrine is non-selective will affect both by the same way and maintain the same ratio between the pulmonary vascular resistance and the systemic vascular resistance. So epinephrine here is superior than dopamine. Why? If we are going to the norepinephrine, there is limited evidence in use in the unit with limited uh, study. It augments the systemic blood pressure with reduction in the pulmonary vascular resistance in turn baby with pulmonary hypertension. So you can use in case of 
HCV for many hypertension <coughs> uh, injuries. So, if you want to approach to the systolic hypotension, systolic hypotension, so you have to decrease the afterload, you have to increase the contraction, you have to increase the cardiac output. So the contractility of the left ventricle, you have to increase. The left ventricle <coughs> afterload, you have to decrease. You have to increase the stroke volume. These are the three points you have to play on to increase the systolic hypertension. So approach to systolic hypertension, initial step, management of non-cardiovascular factor. What is the non-cardiovascular factor? And you play on, contributing to the low filling like high map in a ventilated baby or baby who has pneumothorax or baby who has this IV fluid like hypovolemia it is uncommon for hypovolemia to be the cause of the cardiogenic shock if initial 10 to 20 milligram of crystalloid not help so farsal volume is uh, in the initial phase is unlikely to give you any additional benefit so use only 10, then 10, then stop because you will delay the start of the enotropes, which is very important here. <coughs> so if you want to use drug to increase the systolic blood pressure, you have to use dobutamine in case of cardiogenic shock like in HIE. Epinephrine, more potent. And the should be for case of severe myocardial depression or when the stolic hypotension coexists at the same time. So, epinephrine will increase the diastolic blood pressure and it should be weaned as soon as possible as increased metabolic complication. So, dobutamine, epinephrine, and then after epinephrine, we can use dopamine. In most of the units, we are using dobutamine followed by dopamine at the end. Are using epinephrine in case of diastolic problem. So the resting pressure against the vessel must be treated. The volume status which you are putting in this vessel and the systemic vascular resistance must be affected also. So you have to increase the systemic vascular resistance. You have to affect the resting pressure against the vessel, increase. You have to increase the volume. So, acute volume depletion cases, which cause the historic hypotension, use volume, as we said. Avoid agent causing tachycardia, because tachycardia will give you less time for the myocardium to contract and for the diastolic phase to be filled by blood. And patient already has hypercontractile tachycardia, may impair the feeling. If support is required, so the predominant vasopressor can be uh, used, like uh, dopamine or adrenaline. In hemodynamic significant BDA, so baby who has BDA with hemodynamic significant effect, there is increase in the pulmonary vascular resistance, and therefore reduce the left to right chance. So, minimizing oxygen, permissive hypercapnia, optimize the PEEP. This is a non-pharmacological management in case of compromised BDA. Either to minimize oxygen, give permissive hypercapnia, and optimize your PEEP as a treatment of BDA. If the above failed, and still there is progressive hemodynamic instability, consider to to have inadequate left ventricular output. So the inadequate left ventricular output here must be treated by dobutamine. Avoid systemic vasoconstrictor like dopamine. Treatment of the anemia if present. Then closure of the BDA using the medical uh, ibuprofen or endomethacin or surgical guided by the echo. In case of neck, specific management for neck. In case of SIRS, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, there is also another way of management. If you have systolic and diastolic 
hypotension both at the same time so you have to know that you have deterioration in the left ventricular function or loss of the vascular flow echo may be useful in this case you have to give the volume expansion as we said before followed by agents that increase the systemic vascular resistance dopamine remain here the very line in combined systolic and diastolic hypertension higher to cortisone if early use it will be more effective this is a technical pathological approach and it is very difficult to read now so I will go to common scenario what is BDA BDA it is just the volume of the left ventricular output will be shifted between the systemic circulation to the harmonic circulation to care after pairs according to a pressure gradient and according to the size of the ducts ductus arteriosus and the effect of this volume which will be steamed from the systemic circulation to the harmonic circulation will be three points low systemic blood flow steel phenomena increase in the <coughs> pulmonary blood flow normal or slight elevation of the systemic blood flow and low diastolic blood flow so this is the effect and this effect the initial effect will lead to <coughs> increase in the <coughs> pulmonary blood flow as we said so increasing in the pulmonary blood flow will cause high left atrial back pressure from the return from the pulmonary so it will be rapid left preload at the same time here will cause pulmonary vas uh, venous hypertension which may cause pulmonary hemorrhage especially if you lose the peep if you lose the effect of the peep in case of scrap or, or, or ventilated peep so the rapid increase in the left preload will cause suboptimal cardiac output and this suboptimal cardiac output will cause low in diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure so starting here by low diastolic blood pressure this is one stage which is the early stage and when hemodynamic effect affects the left ventricle <coughs> cardiac output becomes suboptimal will have low diastolic and low systolic blood pressure so when you have a baby who has low diastolic blood pressure with with uh, with the, the the difference between the systolic and the systolic is big so the pulse volume is big it start to be less with low diastole and low systole so you know that the baby is deteriorating more maybe you need more support here more so if you want to treat treat here prevent this stealing number one if you didn't treat here so you will treat here when you have suboptimal cardiac output you have to use the dopamine you have to use the dopamine after that or the medirone <coughs> If you didn't treat here and here and then you are going for operation so this is another uh, step where you have post ligation syndrome and in the post ligation syndrome you will have low diastolic blood pressure it will be reversed to normal diastolic but the systolic blood pressure will be very low so the principle of the management of the PDA either support for the left ventricular systolic performance with systolic with systolic hypotension by giving any trope against agent with augmentation of the left systemic performance we end the start by dopamine or limits the left to right shunt from the start by increasing the peep of CPAP or the peep of the uh, mechanical ventilation increasing the map of ventilation huh? and the uh, you can uh, maintain permissive uh, hyper uh, capnia here is the ligation Im there is where immediate reduction in the left atrial filling pressure the left atrial filling pressure will 
after you you cut you make ligation of the PDA there will be a friction affected uh, uh, by immediate reduction in the left atrial uh, filling pressure and this will lead to effect on the left ventricular output <coughs> so the low left preload reduce the contractility and the increase after load why the pulmonary venous uh, hypertension will be uh, continue and it will may progress to severe hemodynamic instability and oxygenation failure here from the low left preload and the reduction in the contractility there is progressive left ventricular systolic dysfunction over the first 12 hour after the operation so the systolic blood pressure here will continue to decrease while the diastolic blood pressure will be maintained normal or increased so we started before here <coughs> by low blood pressure in the diastole low diastole and systole and we reach to low systole but normal uh, diastole after ligation so the management here will be augmentation of the left systolic performance by using dobutamine or by using uh, a major run. and the major run, if you use it as a prophylaxis it would be better <coughs> what about the pathophysiology if we have prenatal hypoxia HIE and in HIE we have adrenal injury pulmonary hypertension from the effect of the asphyxia and the, in most of units we are initiating the cerebrotic hypothermia and all of the three will affect by causing transient myocardial ischemia in 30% so the problem in the perinatal hypoxia is that we have transient myocardial ischemia and we, this will impair the systolic performance so impairing the systolic performance will increase also the hypoxia and the ischemic effect and low left ventricular output will be affected and this will be augmented by the effect of the therapeutic hypothermia by peripheral vasoconstriction and increased diastolic pressure and may uh, mask the uh, hypotension so you will find the baby has normal blood pressure normal mean blood pressure while he has low left ventricular output uh, <coughs> systemic uh, effect so, asphyxia and the prenatal depression, the cause of circulatory and compromise is myocardial dysfunction. So, if you want to treat using dopamine, dobutamine, whatever, in drops or vasopressor effect, in a case of prenatal hypoxia, you have to consider that you are treating transient myocardial ischemia. Transient myocardial ischemia. So, this best be treated by dobutamine the inotropic action and the nosotropic action so augment the myocardial performance without systemic vasoconstriction if you give vasoconstrictive effect you have already masked hypotension <coughs> and you have high afterload as a compensatory effect and as a therapeutic hypothermia so use the vitamin is uh, important and you can use modulinone also but take care that hypotension will appear very quickly the vitamin also will increase the cardiac output increase the perfusion and will decrease the lactate this is showing the insult and the hypothermia and how uh, uh, the, the pathway occur and the normal outcome so, persistent pulmonary hypertension, in case of we said before, either low pulmonary blood flow, high, high uh, 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 right ventricular systolic pressure, and the right ventricle is exposed to high after all. This is failure of normal decline of the pulmonary vascular resistance after birth, which you are saying persistent pulmonary hypertension. So, persistent hyper, uh, pulmonary hypertension, failure of the normal decline of the vascular resistance of the pulmonary uh, bed uh, will uh, uh, lead to low pulmonary blood flow, high uh, right ventricular systolic pressure, and right ventricular is exposed to this high afterload. So there is poor 
left heart failing the left heart failing will uh, decrease so the left ventricular output will decrease despite the normal uh, left ventricular systolic performance systolic stress with increased myocardial oxygen demand will occur here from the right ventricle exposed to high afterload and the <coughs> the exposed right ventricle to the high uh, right uh, to the high pulmonary hypertension uh, will be affected more as we know that uh, there is poor left heart filling and the left ventricular output is uh, less and we know that the uh, right coronary artery uh, flow uh, will be affected during stall and during the stall so this will uh, lead to right ventricular myocardial ischemia and progressive right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction so the progressive right ventricle dilatation and dysfunction and the right ventricle myocardial ischemia is the end result of any case of persistent pulmonary hypertension so to manage this right ventricle myocardial ischemia you have to treat here because it will it will be reflected here again to the low pulmonary blood flow so you have to cut this circuit by giving therapeutic uh, uh, drugs to reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance and to augment the right ventricular systolic function so the right ventricular systolic function must be augmented and at the same time decrease the pulmonary uh, vascular resistance IDM in a case of the IDM the baby is a big baby 4 kilo 4.5 has complex hemodynamic concentration uh, sometimes these baby are affected by HIE from difficult labor and resuscitation at birth a baby uh, will be exposed to asphyxia so pulmonary hypertension will occur <coughs> also there may be association with congenital heart septal uh, uh, hypertrophy so the septal hypertrophy effect will make the left ventricle diastolic dysfunction may be impaired the left filling so impairment of the uh, left ventricular filling will decrease the uh, cardiac output so this will be affected also by tachycardia the more tachycardia the more the left uh, uh, ventricular filling will be uh, less so decrease the stroke volume so we have to cut this circuit by avoiding conditions that result in low uh, 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 pulmonary blood flow maintain high left atrial uh, pressure and avoid the uh, tachycardia to the extent that some can be giving uh, drugs like in drug to avoid the tachycardia and to give enough uh, IV flow for the baby so treatment of hypovolemia and use of uh, positive entropes must be uh, must be uh, not given so positive entropes, don't leave positive entropes and we don't initiate or uh, leave the hypovolemia without treatment. So must treat the hypovolemia and avoid giving the positive entropes will uh, prevent the impairment of the left uh, ventricular function. So treatment number one, fluid. Number two, may need a selective uh, beta blocker to prevent the tachycardia and to increase more filling of the myocardium. So this is the treatment of infant of the diabetic uh, mother. So uh, don't forget, uh, do your best. Don't do harm. Try to select your entropes or vaso uh, active uh, uh, medication according to the pathophysiology based, not according to the physician uh, bias. Don't be in a rush to select uh, uh, the drug uh, except after knowing the pathophysiology. And the, you have to consider the uh, uh, the treatment of hypovolemia uh, early. Don't use except for 10 to 20 ml uh, per kg. Don't waste your time waiting for its effect. And you go ahead and give the specific uh, drug uh, which use. Maintain monitoring of the uh, baby uh, systolic, diastolic, and mean uh, blood uh, pressure. The cardiac output, uh, cardiac output and the perfusion is very important. The status of the lactate and the pH is uh, very important. 
the dopamine effect as <coughs> as uh, uh, its effect on the heart rate it is only for uh, 10 to 60 minutes after that tachycardia will be abolished an infant of diabetic mother uh, gives IV fluid avoid uh, tachycardia you have to know which receptor you are uh, acting on do your best don't harm and thank you